Welcome to the Maximo Application Suite video series brought to you by Maven Asset Management. In this video series, let's take a look at Maximo Manage KPIs or Key Performance Indicators. KPIs enable an organization to define and analyze and monitor critical, critical performance metrics. These metrics could be anything from schedule compliance to the number of work orders overdue, inventory turns, inventory stockouts, MTTR, MTBF, and so much more. And the purpose of our video series is not to define which KPIs might be best for an organization. Instead, let's focus on the Maximo applications. Those Maximo KPI applications that enable us to efficiently and effectively create, analyze, and monitor KPIs for your organization. So let's take a look at the Maximo Manage KPI functionality. Oftentimes when a user signs into Maximo, they'll see their start center and their KPIs display. So in this case, I'm signed in as an operations manager. On the far left-hand side, I see a list of KPIs in this portlet. They're displayed in red and green and yellow status. Red meaning the KPI is performing poorly and I want to focus on that. Green is good status, yellow is in the middle of the red and the green, maybe I need to check that KP out to make sure it doesn't go into the red status. Also, there's ability to have an intense focus on one or more KPIs with an individual KPI display. In this case, this individual is looking at missing data KPI, no fail data. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I look at the KPI description, it says it's EM work orders that have no failure data. So this means my emergency work, when that occurred, no one reported the problem cause remedy associated with that. Well, that's extremely important for an organization because that forms the base, the base of asset management. And this organization will never be able to grow into other areas of the Maximo application suite with asset health and asset predict if they don't have that base data to establish what those predictive failures might be in the future. So really, really important. This is one of my favorite KPIs. But let's go back another level and understand how KPIs can be created and how they can be managed and how users can focus on them. So Maximo supplies three KPI applications. The first two, KPI Template and KPI Manager, are targeting an administrator, someone who knows enough about SQL who can create and manage the KPIs. The last application, KPI Viewer, is intended for all users of the organization so they can understand what KPIs are, why they're important to their organization, and how their daily job tasks can impact KPI performance. KPI Template and KPI Viewer were introduced in the Maximo 7.6 releases. KPI Manager has been around in Maximo for many, many releases, many, many years. So if we look at the difference of a KPI Template versus a KPI Manager, my mind always goes back to Asset Template. When you use Asset Template, you create one base information where you can create multiple variations for individual assets. The same is true with KPI template. You create a base KPI, define variables, and from that you can create multiple individual KPIs. So if you're monitoring something like schedule compliance, you might define a variable for work type or priority. KPI manager, on the other hand, is really intended for a single KPI. If you are taking a where clause from a Maximo application and creating a KPI, or are you defining it for a single KPI value? That's when you use KPI Manager. But also very importantly, it's important to note that the KPI Manager enables you to set security, who can see which KPIs, define the schedule. KPIs don't all have to run at the same time. Some KPIs might only need to go or need only run once a month, once a quarter and also communicate what is the definition of the KPI so the organization all has the same understanding. And then lastly, the KPI viewer, enabling your users to see 
what a KPI is, understand how it is calculated, and also collaborate. So let's drill a little deeper on each one of these applications, and then we'll have a demo for each one of them. KPI template, again, remember this is for our administrator. How does he use this application? Well, very, um, the very first thing he's going to do is define the SQL. And you can see a SQL that is copied here below from one of the out-of-the-box delivered KPI template records. But what's key here is defining the variable. What is that variable that is going to be substituted when the KPI is generated? So in this case, we're looking at some open work and our two variables are defined as work priority and work type. Notice the syntax here. The syntax is important in the SQL, so that can be parsed out and substituted with the variables which are defined in this case as priority and work type. It's important to bind those variables, in this case to the object and attribute, so you can define what type that is. So for example, if I define work order work priority, Maximo brings back that's a type integer. So if I was defining what my variable would be, I know I have to put in that integer or numeric variable, variable excuse me, I can't put in like a text field like ABC. So if you're not familiar with the KPI template application, again, look at the KPIs that might be delivered, or excuse me, the KPI templates that might be delivered in the Max Demo database for some great examples and information on the syntax. After you define the variables, now you're going to define the individual KPIs. So as I scroll down in that screen, I'm going to see that I need to define my KPIs, the target information, so I'm going to do that down here. So for example, KPI 10 is my open work. What are my variables? Well, I'm going to say it's priority one work with EM work order. And then the next one, I just make one quick change that I change the priority type from a one to two. Now again, if I was doing this in KPI manager, I could take an existing KPI and duplicate it and make the change. But what happens if I have to make a global change to all those work orders, or excuse me, to all those KPIs? That's a big benefit from using the KPI template. It enables you to streamline and maintain the definition of the KPIs. And then once I have that all information um, defined, again, with my KPI variables and the variable value, I'm going to generate my KPIs. So in this case, if you look closely, I had eight up, to, up here defined it for my variable values, so then I would have eight individual KPIs available. Continuing with the same example, I could then look for my variables, or excuse me, look for my KPIs in the KPI manager application. I could just simply search on the template field in the KPI list tab, or I could input the description, and now look, it's all populated for you, and it's all consistent. But we don't want to stop there, right? We really need additional information to make this KPI useful to our organization. The first thing we need to do is include the long description. Remember back in the beginning when I was telling you about the definition of an EM work order with no failure data? Well, I might know that because I created that KPI, but other individuals in my organization would not be familiar with that. So it's key to enter that long description. You might want to review or define your KPI SQL. Um, in the case, if you're a one-off KPI, you would have to do that in the KPI manager application. Again, your KPI limits, and I want to highlight in this area up here, hugely critical are these two fields, is active and is public. Sometimes KPIs are only created for a particular project or for a particular time period, and over time they're no longer applicable to an organization. In that case, make sure that you toggle off the field from active to inactive because we want to, again, focus the organization on those key sets of KPIs that are most important to them. Is public is also a critical field. 
not every user should have access to not to every single KPI. So some examples are single line purchase orders. Is this applicable to every individual in the organization? It may or may not be. So again, use the public field to toggle that value on and off. And then that builds to the security tab. The security tab introduced in Maximo 7.6 enables you to define which security groups should have access to which KPIs. And building on that is the schedule functionality. Do we need to run this KPI with all the other KPIs? Or does the KPI need to be run once a month, once a quarter? You define the cron task instances. You define when KPIs should be scheduled. And when they're scheduled, should we hold that value in the Maximo database? Hugely important, is that a word, hugely important, but very important for us to be able to track or analyze KPI data. And then lastly is our KPI viewer application. The KPI viewer application is intended for all users, all users to view, analyze, and collaborate on KPIs. Why is this important? We need that KPI definition, that long description information, so our users know what the KPI is, how it is calculated, why it's important to the organization, and how individuals can impact performance. Many, many times users have different understandings of KPIs, so again, make sure everyone has the same definition by inputting this valuable information. And that builds to the next functionality of KPI Viewer where people can collaborate. Maybe they have a question on the KPI. In this case, there was a team me meeting and they're not clear on what determines if a work order is emergency or corrective maintenance work. So isn't that great? People trying to understand what this KPI is and why it's important to the organization. So as we move into our next series of videos, we'll be exploring more details on the KPI template manager and viewer. We'll have a demonstration of each one of those and we'll be looking at KPIs with assets without failure codes because this all builds to our case of asset health and predictive maintenance. Thank you very much for your time.